you may have heard of a daily freedom number. I was keeping a monthly budget, self-employment part of this financial reset. Hi friends, it's Alex, and we're gonna do a financial reset video. Money, finances, budgeting is a touchy subject, and I'm not a financial advisor, but I am someone really feeling the weight of the current economy and owing a lot of money for school and things like that. Normal advice where people are just like, invest, 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 like it's not doing it for me. So I can't control what is happening in the economy, I can't control what's happening in the world, I can't control inflation but I can control my finances, what I do, and try to make the best of it. So that's what this video is all about. And I'm just gonna take you through all the different things that I'm going to do, so hopefully it helps you. I'm gonna give you a list of all the things I'm gonna go over in this video right here. I'm gonna read them out, but there could be one or two added um, in case I forgot one because I'm doing this over the span of two weeks because I don't want to, how do I politely say half-ass it? I want to actually do it good because it's very important to me. But a couple things we're gonna do in this video and if there's something specific you want, timestamps are always available. So I'm gonna update my budget and just walk you through what I actually include in a monthly budget. Um, that's gonna be pretty brief, but I'll explain it. I'm gonna show you how I'm keeping a budget binder. That's a new thing I've started. I'm going to set up a business expense tracker. This is not applicable to everybody because it has to do with me being self-employed. Income tracker, I want to really track my income, how it's changing, like if there's any fluctuations. And I'm going to look at some financial goals because I think setting realistic goals that I can handle will give me some comfort during this time. And then I'm gonna show you the envelope challenge. So this is the one saving challenge that I'm doing. It's pretty cute. I really like watching the videos on YouTube, so I wanted to show you. And if you guys like any of this and want me to do more financial videos, I'm totally happy to. Again, I'm not an expert. Okay, enjoy. So this is my budget binder. I will link it below. I'm just gonna give you a very quick overview how you do it. So I actually do my monthly budgets in a different spreadsheet, but this is where I do a cash savings. So for example, this is my groceries. Right now I have $440 saved of the 400 goal. So I've oversaved this month because sometimes I kind of go over budget. And then this is my business expenses. So I only have 180 saved out of my $300 goal. So for example, today I got paid, I took out some cash, and instead of allocating it in, you know, the virtual world, I'm actually going to do it in cash so I can visualize how much I'm spending. I'm going to put $120 in and that will bring me to my $300 goal. So I take $120, I open up this little pocket and put the money in and then it's safe there until it's time to actually pay my bills and put the money back in the bank. I know this can be an extra step and it may seem like, why, what is the point? Why do you need to do this if you have everything saved in a spreadsheet? This is actually helping me visualize how much money I'm spending, how much money I'm making, and it's just giving me a much more, let's say intimate or even just respected value of the money I'm making and spending, and I'm being a little bit more mindful about how much I'm spending, and that's what I need to be doing right now. It's definitely working for me. If this is something you wanna try, I will include it down in my description. Like the binder is super cheap. You can also just do it with whatever. Now this is my envelope challenge. So I got this from Etsy, I'll link the shop below. Basically it's a savings challenge. I started doing this because even putting money in a savings account, it doesn't always do me a whole lot of good because it's still in there and I can just access it so easily. I kind of set and forget this sometimes, it's the best thing. So it's 100 different envelopes and they're all numbered zero to 100. And the trick is at whatever pace you're going, you draw the amount that you wanna fill up per week and whatever the number is on the envelope is how much you put in it. So for example, I just picked up a 23, a 49, and an 84. So I have to put $23 in there, $49 in there, and $84 in there. So people do this on a year scale, and you can do it either faster or quicker. You can do half, whatever is up to you. I'm doing it on a six month scale from, I think I started in July and I'm gonna finish in January. After Christmas, right before taxes, that's when I'm gonna want the money the most. So this is gonna be really good for me. It, d it requires me to do three to four envelopes a week, which when you think about it is a lot. Like if I'm picking three $90 envelopes in a week, that is a lot. So if that gets too much, I'll only do half. But the thing is the envelopes are shuffled. So I don't know how much money I'll end up in the end if I only do half. 
but if you do all envelopes from zero to 100, you will save $5,000. I'm definitely going to do it in 2023 and track it as well. I'll do it for an actual week at a time and save it over a year. That is a doable pace. It is really a doable pace. And the thing with putting cash away and same with the budget binder, when I'm taking the cash and I'm putting it away somewhere where I can't just, you know, pop it on a credit card or move it somewhere, I'm not spending it. I have less money to spend. It's making me be way more mindful. So if this is something you're looking for, I definitely recommend doing it. If it's something you want me to film more, I will also do it. So you can just let me know. As part of my financial reset, this is something I do monthly, but I'm also including it in the financial reset just so you can get an idea, but a monthly budget. So I guess I'll screen record. I made a sample blank one. Although I have shared quite a bit about my budgeting here in this video, there are some things that I'm just not comfortable putting out there completely and I hope you can understand that. So I'm just going to give you like a very brief overview of my budget and what I include and now I do update it basically every time I do a refresh like recently. I've been tracking more about my savings because I haven't really been looking into savings because I haven't been able to save. I'm at a point now where I'm still paying things off, but I also want to save because I'm also self-employed, so I have to pay taxes. So I don't have a choice just to put it all into debt, like to pay off debt. So the first page is in and out, I call it, is basically to track my income um, and my expenses and just see the difference, how much money I've saved, how much money I've made, and then make any notes. So I actually don't make a lot of notes. I just kind of make mental notes for the next budget and when I'm setting my goals. I put in... Um, like right here, I have a breakdown of all my income streams. Now, I actually don't make, I don't have any sponsorships. I'm not making any money with ads. I haven't really been using my photography and Etsy very much, but they are still something that I have access to that I do hope one day grows into something. So I include it. I just put zero there for now. So mostly like I do surveys. I get a couple extra bucks a month. A job one, I was just working a full-time job on top of freelancing. Now I'm just freelancing. But I had two to break it down, so if you have multiple jobs or you were like me, had like a side project, you can put that in there. I also put unexpected because I get unexpected money, like maybe you get like GST you weren't expecting or someone gives you a gift or you win money, like you don't know, so just include it. And I have my projected expenses. I break down all my expenses into life, work, and then even further into two, my two projects, so whatever I'm investing in them. Um, gifts, spending is like my social, and then savings. So savings is like if I go on a trip, I have to dip into my savings to pay for that. So the next screen is totals. So here's where I would fill in how much I'm starting, and then it auto-populates. When I put in profits and deductions, it auto-populates what I end with. So I can see, like if I'm starting with so much of my savings specifically, how much I end with, and if I get income, so if I get some profit, I can delegate it, is that the right word? I can put it to where it needs filling up, you know what I mean? Then my profits. So when I get money, it'll come down here in the total and I break it into, maybe I put 80% of it into my life bills and 20% of my savings. Maybe that's what I'm doing with this payment. I would do that. The check is here just to make sure that I actually put all the money in because sometimes I forget. Then savings breakdown, I have a debt breakdown. So if you have any credit debt, you have to pay back like a student loan or if you owe something on taxes, you would put it in there. So you can also keep track of your debt. If you owe debt, do not just have it on like an app or a credit card or like somewhere. Have it somewhere broken down in your budget so you can start putting money towards it or understand if it's getting bigger or getting smaller and at what pace. You really need to keep track of that. Then I have savings, so I have RSP. Um, investment, if I invest any money, I don't a lot, but I have a little bit. Savings, so some I just put into a savings account. And then I'm doing an envelope challenge, which you have already seen in this video, I believe. I think I'm putting this clip after. So I do that, and then finally my expenses. So all these sheets are connected together. If people really like this and they want it, you can let me know in the comments, and I will make it a little bit prettier and give it to you for free, like totally fine. But yeah, I just basically put in... Um, the payment I have to make, like here you'll see all the random things that I pay for in a month. Predicted. So like, if you know what the price of it is, it's still predicted because you never know. Maybe something happens and you don't pay it or it goes up or it goes down. Um, so I just include predicted and how much I actually spend. 
and then I also put it in its account. So is it a life bill? Is it a work bill? Is it a gift? Is it a social event? And then that all auto populates. So I can see where in my life I'm spending the most money. And then I usually put notes on the side. So like if I'm paying for something and I'm not really using it, I will cancel it. If you are not visualizing how much you're spending and where it's going towards and what it's actually, like what the purpose is. Like if I'm spending... For example, last month I spent a little bit too much money going out and socializing. Listen, it's good to spend money on socializing and you get one life. But I was being a little bit, like, whatever with it and I overspent. And when I saw how much I spent on that compared to, like, my groceries that get me through the month and I compared the two numbers, I was like, this is not normal. This is not right. <laughs> so I may, I'm going to make some adjustments for this month. So I was keeping monthly budget. And yeah, if you want, if you want this, let me know. I'll make it pretty and you can have it. So by now we've went over the envelope challenge, the budget challenge, and probably my monthly budget, if that's the order I'm putting it in. And now I want to set some financial goals before I show you like the self-employment things I do. So when it comes to financial goals, like I don't have a magic number. You know, I don't want to make a certain amount of money. I don't want to be like a millionaire. I don't care about that. I do, however, want to live comfortably. I want to have a safety net and I would like to have a garden. <laughs> so it's hard to kind of come up with this goal in mind. Like, yeah, my goal could be that I want to pay off any, you know, pay off my school and pay off this. It could be that I want to, you know, I want to save up for a house for a garden, but like, what is that number? And I don't know. So I'm going to show you what I've learned and how I set my goals. And you might have heard it before, but I've heard it in two different ways. So I'm going to show you how to use both of them. You may have heard of a daily freedom number. So a daily freedom number is basically how much you need to make per day to either live comfortably or live the life of your dreams. It can go either way. So the most important thing you should start with is how can you get by? How can you live comfortably? Because especially when you're in a time of crisis or you're stressed about money, which I think a lot of us are, you want to know what the very minimum is you should be making. And this can be stressful because if you are just working a one salary job, that's sucking all your time and you are not making enough to live it is stressful but it's good for you to know that because that means you can start bringing this to someone to get a raise you can start looking for other jobs things like that like even if this hurts it's something you need to know so to get your daily freedom number you would take your monthly budget if you've created a monthly budget like I showed you before if not try to make an estimate I know what mine is approximately. I'm gonna say that I need $5,000 per month right now. When it comes to like, you know, my rent is already a thousand. I think about all my bills, also my business expenses. Like it's not just bills for me. I also have to pay into my business every month. I'm just gonna say 5,000. That also includes like my debt that I have to pay off and things like that. So we're gonna go with 5,000. It can be less than that. That doesn't have, it can be more than that. Like it's totally in yours. This is just my example. So monthly budget, $5,000 is what I need to pay all my bills and to have a little bit of money left over to pay off debt and save. Divide that by 30. So I know, I know the months don't all have the same number of days, but 30 is just the number you would use. So just divide by 30. So when I divide 5,000 by 30, I get 167. It's about that. So 167. So for me to live comfortably, I need to make $167 a day. So if you are a salaried job, if you know what you get paid bi-weekly, weekly, monthly, yearly, just divide that by the associative number that can give you this daily amount and see if that matches up with your daily freedom number. So this is my minimum. And now I don't know how to get this next number. I've been thinking about it and I'm like, what What do I actually want to see from this? Because I really, really don't know. I was like, okay, what would it take to make six figures? Part of me is like, that is aiming super high. And the other part of me is like, you have to aim that high if you want a house in the current climate. So I, I have no choice but to aim that high. So if I want to make 100000 in a year, so divide that by 12 months, that's $8,333 a month. So then I take that number and divide it by 30. I want to make at least $278 a day if I want to reach this number. Obviously, this doesn't include taxes. This doesn't include everything else. 
So if you want to like get a little bit more granular with it, you can. And for me, this is what I would do. So for the 278, considering taxes, considering this is like a maximum number that I'm aiming for, I'll bump it up to 300. So right now my goal, my financial goal is every day I want to make $167 to $300. Obviously, I'm not going to make that number every day, especially being self-employed. I don't have that guaranteed income, and the guaranteed income that I have does not always equal that much a day. Some days I make a lot more, some days I make a lot less. So at the end of every week, I actually look at how much money I made and I divide it by seven, or you can just do that in the month, like it's totally up to you. You do that and you see if you're hitting this target. And if you are hitting this target, celebrate fabulous keep going pay more attention to maybe your expenses to see like are you eating into this like even though you're making that number have you upped your expenses that you're eating away at this daily freedom number if you're not making this this is when you have to look at how can i save money is there a room for a raise a promotion can i talk to my employment about extra hours do i have the bandwidth for that and then in the same breath you can also look for a new job or you want to start something on your own so that's how i set my financial goals i hope that's helpful now i'm going to show you my self-employment so if you don't care about business income business expenses you can end it here thank you for watching but if not go into that so now we're at the self-employment part of this financial reset and I'm going to show you the spreadsheet that I have. I did block out job types and clients just for respect to my clients. Um, there's a lot of details even within the job type that can be telling. I signed a lot of NDAs so this is just to protect them but you'll still get the gist. So this is my spreadsheet. The first thing I put in right away is the date. I go month by month so I'm just making sure everything is in order so that I can calculate You'll see over here month total and month profit. I want to calculate all of this for the end of the month. I want to see how much I made and how much I actually profited. Now this is not including, this profit is not including business expenses. So like my t true income profit will have to be calculated at the end of the year. Like that's what I'm doing. Then I have the job type and client. So although you don't really need this, um, obviously it gives you more details, but I'm mostly tracking this because I want to see like who my long-term clients are. Um, if I do have someone who works with me now and doesn't come back until a few months from now, I would like to have it on record that I've worked with them before and especially look at the rates that I work with them with if they're having that kind of expectation when I've raised my rates. And the job type also lets me see what is in higher demand at certain times of the year so I can prepare for next year because there are very, very busy times and there are very, very slow times that you can usually guess by which quarter you're in. Um, so this is like my own little analytics that I need to run. So platform, I'm doing this because I'm trying to just not use Fiverr. I do have some personal people, personal people? I do have some personal clients that I just have off platform that I've worked with, um, which I want to keep doing, but I also want to try Upwork and some other freelancing sites. I just want to broaden it a little bit, try to get some higher paying clients so that I can have a little bit more free time. So I put the platform in and the platform also matters because I put the platform and I put the payment space because there's fees associated with that and you need to track what fees you are paying to these groups or these systems. It's good to have for tax time. So I put in the price and this is the price and I give which rate it's in because I actually work in a lot of different currencies. So this is the price that I charge. And the reason I do it like this is because I can now see how much actually is taken out of that before I convert it to Canadian to see what I'm actually making. So that's why the payment space and platform matters because then I calculate the fees. So how much fees are these payments and or platforms taking from me? That's put in here. Then I get my revenue. So how much am I making from this? So this is not how much I'm profiting. This is just how much I'm making at face value. So I get that. Some of it is already in Canadian. Some of it won't be. So I have to convert it. Um, so I do that conversion and I see how much I'm actually making in Canadian. That's what I, that's my currency. I'm Canadian. And then I also estimate what I need to pay at tax time. So I know really I'm just going to have to take my full income and do this at the end of the year, but it gives me an idea of how much I'm actually profiting profiting, and how much I should be also saving. That's a good point. Good point, Alex. Good, good point. So now I see the profit, and that's how I plug in the month total month profit. I'm also going to put in 
taxes to save because although I'm going to have to calculate my business expenses and subtract them, I'm still going to have to owe some money and it would be better to save it and not have to spend it than to not save it at all. So in here, I'm also going to do a sum function and I'm just going to do a sum of the tax estimate. So I should have saved in January at least $185. So this is really going to help me put money into a savings account that is for taxes. I have that set up. That's what I'm doing. So if you want this template, it's pretty simple, but I didn't even think about that. I will um, make a blank one and offer it to whoever wants it. So you just let me know. So that's my income. I also have to make a spreadsheet for my expenses as part of this reset. So we'll do that as well. Hello. So as part of being self-employed or, you know, side gig, whatever you have that you're working on. So we've already went over my business income and how I track that. I also need to track my business expenses. So I'm in Canada. I don't know how it works around the world. This is crooked and that looks weird, doesn't it? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know how it works around the world, but in Canada, you can claim some of your business expenses. So I track everything, but you need to make sure you have a receipt. So just like really remember that when I'm showing you this. If you get a paper receipt, just like take a picture and on your phone, you can do like a, a scan of it and put it on. But I can show you a breakdown of how it works. And again, this is something you want. It's very simple. I don't like to overcomplicate things with money because money is complicated as it is. I want to see it at face value. I want to understand it quickly. I want to be able to input and export quickly. So that's kind of what I did. So these are my business expenses. So in the first column, it says expense. Let's do, yeah, let's do a subscription that I use for my business. So I use Canva. I love Canva and I pay for pro just because I like having access to all the features that they have. So I'm going to put in Canva. And in the expense type, the reason I'm putting type is because when I do my tax form, they break it down into different types of things. Like it could be equipment, training, software, management, like things like that. So I don't know what they exactly are, but I'm going to use my own terms. So then it'll just be easier for me to make the connection when tax time comes. And listen, this is not just for taxes. This sheet is for other things too. So we will get into that. So expense type, I'm going to say software because it's just software that I use. Cost is $16.99 a month. And that's in Canadian. I need to put the um, currency in because sometimes I have stuff with different currency and it can get kind of confusing. Um, so reoccurrence, I put that here because some things are like a one-off, some things are yearly, some things are bi-weekly, some things are monthly. So this is monthly. And I'm also going to put, I knew I was missing something, monthly. Um, before expense, we're actually going to add a column to the left and put in date. So I'm actually going to put in January 23rd, 2022. So I put that in because it's monthly, but I know I started paying for it in January. So I know it's going to be a full 12 months. There's going to be other things that I sign up for later in the year that is monthly, but it's not going to be 12 times that number because it was only so many months this tax year. So total cost equals 16.99 times 12, 203.88 a year. And also putting this in also makes you think if something is worth it or not, because it's like, oh yeah, it's less than $20 monthly, but over the course of a year, it's $200. Was it worth it? Did I use it enough in the year to be spending $200 on it? And for me, like, yes, I use it daily. So, so reason for purchase, I'm just going to put graphic design because, you know, that's something that big I do in freelancing. But if it was like a course, maybe you did a social media course, I would specifically put in for my social media clients. I did it to further my career. Like just in case you ever get audited, just have everything there. So receipt, I would actually have to go, so it's in my Apple, I would just go get a link to it or screenshot it or whatever and add that in. I had, um, I copied my other spreadsheet to make this one, so I'll delete that. Actually, I am going to keep the Canadian co conversion there. Because sometimes it's not in Canadian, um, but this one is, so it's still 203.88. So... Now it says income, profit, business expenses, net. I'm going to do this monthly 
So every month I'm going to put in, but I would go back to my business income, see how much I made that month, and I go into business expenses. But the thing you need to remember is you wouldn't use total cost for this this number. You would use cost because if you're doing it on a monthly basis. Now you might not do it till a year, that's totally fine, but if you want to see how much you're really keeping to yourself like when you consider expenses when you consider taxes when you consider fees like how much are you really making when you're pricing your items it's really important and then i put in business expenses and then i would get my net and my net is how much i'm actually making so this spreadsheet i'm showing you is not just for tax time this spreadsheet is so important because it's showing me am i pricing myself fairly am i actually making a living or am i just scraping by how can I improve this? Does it mean that I'm spending money on something I don't really use and it's taking a bite out of my profits? Or am I charging so low when all the software and things I'm putting into it are so expensive? Plus my time and my value, you know what I mean? So this is just really gonna help me price things and just do better in the future.